Another very critical thing that we need to talk about is visitation. That, that'll be point number eight, visitation. It, it's more than just talking to the kids, more than blitzing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to set a time aside every week where you're out spending time with the kids, spending time with their parents. Mm -hmm. The whole reason, okay, the whole reason that we're even doing sidewalk Sunday schools throughout New York City is because we want to reach entire families. Mm -hmm. We want to change this generation. The only way we can do that is by getting into the to people's homes, spending time with them, talking to them, and developing relationships there. Mm -hmm. Letting them know that Christianity is not just something for old people. Mm -hmm. Letting them know that Jesus Christ is not just uh, a story in, in some book. That He is alive and that He can make a difference in their life and meet their problems. You can't always do that from a platform. You can't always do that with a mm -hmm. microphone. Yeah, that's right. Because people's problems are so diverse yeah. and so different. And some problems that come up, and you know exactly what kind of problems I'm talking about, you can't even begin to talk about them on a platform. So how do you meet them? And you're how not even you going to know what they are. Yeah. I mean, exactly. not even just discuss them, but there's no way. That's like saying you go to church, and but there's no interaction between you and the pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there has to be some kind of personal interaction sure. with these kids. Because whether we like it or not, and whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, Basically, you're the only Jesus these people are ever going to see. Now, that's the bottom line. After it's all said and done, you're the role model. You become the person that those kids see, and they equate you with spirituality. Mm -hmm. Be it right or wrong, that's the way it is. And when you start going into the homes, visiting, spending that time weekly off the platform in the home, that's when there starts to come a cohesiveness, a relationship, a development of these kids. I went, remember what I was telling you this week about the kids with the clubhouse? Mm -hmm. the, the kids on my bus route built a clubhouse. They were kind of borderline attenders for Sunday school. Last thing I needed to be doing was going up, spending time hanging out at their clubhouse on the roof of this tenement building, which I really wasn't crazy about going there in the first place. But I went because they wanted me to come up there. Totally different attitude after that. See, what is it doing? Spending time on my part, sure. Making a sacrifice of time, but it's building that relationship totally apart from the platform ministry, totally apart from the public speaking ministry. That's why we make in our Sunday school over 7,000 personal visits every week. No, it's not a mistake. I didn't make a mistake with that number. That's over 7,000 personal visits every week. Does it pay off or not? No, I think that's the whole success of the ministry. That's right. I think if you're going to build a ministry that lasts, if you're going to build something that's going to be going on years down the road, you've got to have a rapport with the family. Mm -hmm. The kids, after a while, are going to get older. They're not, going to be want, they're not going to want to sit down on the ground and listen to you. So what's going to happen? Are they going to quit coming to church? Mm -hmm. No. They've got to mature, mature in the Lord, get in a fellowship. And, um, and, and that's what makes it happen. Let's talk about exactly what visitation is. <laughs> 7,000 visits does not mean we spend, you know, 7,000 times up in a clubhouse right, right. or buy 7,000 kids an ice cream cone. Basically what you do is you have your roster, okay? It's very important to get the name and address. And even on my roster, I put the birthdays so that I can talk because yeah. birthdays are real important that's to right, kids. That's right, that's right. And I, even in parentheses, I put the, uh, the mom or the dad's name, mm -hmm. okay? So when I go up, I say, okay, this person lives at this door. I know what kids live there. I know how old they are. I know the mom's name. Okay, I go up, knock on the door. They come. I have the flyer. I hand it to them. I tell them exactly what's going on. 30 seconds, tops. Mm -hmm. Tell them what's going on. Say, now, I hope you guys are going to come this week. You're going to come? Yes, they're going to come. Okay. And then before they go, I say, now, how's everything going? You know, is there anything you need? Is there anything I can do? And, and that lets them know that you care about them. Mm -hmm. You're not just there throwing papers at them. You're not just throwing hamburgers at them. You're not just throwing the Word of God at them mm -hmm. that you care about what's that's going right. on. And that's building that relationship. Mm -hmm. Again, it's going into the home. If it's a 30-second, if it's a 60-second, there, there, there's a touching there. You know, there, there, there is a touching there where you're actually coming in contact on a personal level not just letting a stage down and throwing tarps down for kids to sit on, 
cranking up a sound system, playing some nice gospel music, and preaching some kind of cute little Bible lesson. It goes beyond that. That's where you start building the relationships. And you'll be amazed when you ask them, how's it going? Parents will say, well, this, 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 and that has happened. So what does that do? That opens the door for you to come back mm -hmm. at another time, deal with their problems, lead them to Jesus, win them to the Lord right there in their own home, deal with that problem at another time when you actually have the time to sit down and deal with it on a more personal basis. But set a regular time to go visiting. I learned a long time ago, if you don't set a time to go visiting, you'll never do it. If you go during the week when it's convenient, you'll never do it. I have always said, your week revolves around your time of soul winning and visitation. Your soul winning and visitation should not revolve around your week. In other words, like for me, I visit my kids on Thursday and Friday. I spend two hours from four to six on Thursday, two hours from four to six on Friday. Well, I know that. That is the time that I have with my workers to set to go do my visiting for my route, for the kids that I deal with that I'm responsible for. Yes, I have a bus route. Yes, I drive my bus. That's important because I don't ask any of my staff to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself. That's important for a leader to learn. All right. Let's say, hypothetically, it's Thursday afternoon. A visitor calls. They say, can you meet me at the airport? They may be an important visitor. My reaction is, no, I can't do that. Because from 4 to 6, that's when I visit my route. That's when I visit my kids. OK? It's important. Maybe you'll have to do it in the evening. I don't know. But set a time, OK? Set a time, stick with it. Chris talked about the roster. Where do you come up with the roster? Remember we talked about the coloring contest, where they've got to put their names and addresses? Get the kids to sign up. As you see new kids coming, as you see new kids coming to Sidewalk Sunday School, if you're picking them up on a bus to bring them to Sidewalk Sunday School, even if you're picking them up to bring your, them to your Sunday School, no matter where you're having it, be aware of visitors. Get their name, address, and immediately put it on the roster because that roster becomes your liaison between you and the home. It's your only contact point that you've got. Make copies of it, put it away somewhere so you don't lose it, okay? You've got to have that. Take it with you. Don't rely on memory when you go out to visit. Take it out there door by door, little by little, one step at a time. There is no substitute for that personal visit. I remember I heard a story years ago, and it's a funny one, and I want to tell it to you before we complete this segment. This, uh, this young man was going into the Army, got drafted. He was going into one year's active duty. But he was supposed to get married. He was all upset. He went to his fiance. He said, honey, I've got to go into one year's active duty. He said, I love you. I want to marry you, but, but it'd be silly for us to get married now because I'm going to leave right away. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to get 365 postcards. And every day when I'm gone, you're going to get a postcard in the mail. And it's going to prove to you how much I love you. And he said, the day I get back from my tour of duty overseas, I'm going to marry you, and we're going to live happily ever after. It's going to be wonderful. She said, OK, fine, I'll wait a year. Well, he did everything he could do. He actually had a suitcase, if you can believe this, filled with the 365 postcards. He actually stamped them before he ever left, OK? Every day, like clockwork. Every day, filled out the card, sent it. She got him. Every day, just like clockwork, 365 days went by. The year was complete. He got home. The day after he got home, he ran to her house, knocked on the door. Her mother came to the door. He said, I'm here. I want to get married. His mother said, I'm sorry. She's already married. He said, what? I can't believe this. He was in shock. He said, I've been faithful. I told her I loved her. I sent her the postcards every day. Who did she marry? And her mother said, she married the postman. Well, 
Some of you understand what I'm saying. Okay? You can send a card, folks. You can call people. There is no substitute for the personal visit. Make sense? I hope so. Keep a roster. Get in there. Be excited. Let them know that you care enough to go there and build that relationship. You're drawing the net. And the only way that net is going to be drawn in tight is through that personal visit. It's Bill from Sunday School. You guys there? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What are you guys up to? You all right? Yeah. Hi, Mom. How you doing? I Listen, love come you. here, come here. Listen real close now, okay? You guys listening? I want to explain to you. We got our Sunday School tomorrow, regular time, on the corner at 3 o'clock sharp, all right? I want you guys to know what's going on. We've got sunflower seeds for all the kids after the Bible lesson, okay? I want you to take these home in the house. And make sure you hold on to them till tomorrow, okay? You're going to be able to walk the kids down there? Sure. Okay, and if you see any of the kids on the way, tell their moms, get them rounded up and get them ready. Okay. We're going to have a big day. We're right in the middle of the Ten Commandments. It's going to be a great Bible lesson. I want to make sure you guys are there, okay? You doing good? All right. I'll see you tomorrow, regular time. Okay? You ready? Okay. Bye-bye. God bless you guys. We'll see you at Sunday school. Okay. Bye-bye. Point number nine was lesson preparation. We're winding this program to a close now and I think it's it's going to conclude by obviously bringing the kids to a point of decision but before we can actually put on the program there has to be a time of preparation now Chris we have meetings weekly right with all of our staff folks our idea people what we're going to do mm -hmm. when we talk about the object lesson the theme let's first of all talk about the theme we take one thought. That's right. So many times we think of teaching, and I, I, some of you may have taught before, some of you may have never taught before, but the common mistake in teaching is going from one concept to another concept to another concept. The kids may have a great time, but it's questionable how much they actually retain over the long period of time. What we do is we take one concept, one thought, uh, and, and develop that thought through many different ways. So we get the theme, and then, then what do we do from there? Well, from there, with that one, that one thought, you can use a variety of, of object lessons, of stories. That's a good, object lessons is the easiest, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, poster board stories. And, and what you're doing is no matter what it is you're trying to bring to the kids, they're going to leave with just one thought. Right. Okay. Um, for example, let's say we're going to, okay, this past week we taught it on excuses. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about how... It's so easy to make up excuses sometimes when really we need to be the ones making a difference. There could have been a lot of different angles we went on, mm -hmm. but we didn't. We talked about how Jonah made excuses. We talked about how sometimes we make excuses for not going to church, about how sometimes, you know, the excuses we make for church, they can cost us down the road. Mm -hmm. And we tied it in. And the whole thing was excuses can kill. Right. And we kept putting that up, holding excuses it up. Excuses can, can kill. Excuses can kill. Excuses can kill. In between, staggered. Mm -hmm. between each one of the thoughts that we were conveying. And then we wrapped it up with a story about how this, um, this little pig had responsibilities to do. He made up excuses, didn't do it, and in the end, somebody got seriously hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, But all through the whole theme, we just talked about excuses. Mm -hmm. We could have talked about, in pirate days, we could have talked about Jonah, about Noah, about Paul, but we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. We just had one theme. We ran it straight through. Um, the two basic things for teaching are object lessons, mm -hmm. which basically you just take any object, uh, a cup for example, and you apply a spiritual principle to it, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. to um, talk about filling the cup up, being filled with the Holy Spirit, whatever. I mean, that's an object lesson. You take an object and you teach a lesson around mm -hmm. it. The key on that is letting people see what you say. That's right. Don't just stand up there and talk. Okay? There is nothing more boring than watching two people sitting behind a table and talking. That's why we're holding this class up right now, because we're trying to convince you that don't do what we do, do what we say, okay? But anything that you do, whether you're, whatever you're saying, there's got to be something in your hand, and we're going to be going over in the last point the actual delivery of the message. So we're not going to get ahead of ourselves in that part, right. but we're preparing. We're talking about preparing, get everything ready, 
get everything that you need if it's a we're talking about post to board stories. Right. Now how do you make those? Because you can't use right, you can't an use overhead projector. Overheads you can't use a slide right. projector, you can't use a film strip projector outside for obvious reasons. So how do they how do they do that? Basically what we have found is that the best thing to use is a poster board story. And what that is is just the large poster boards that you can buy in any um, Yeah, it's seventeen by twenty two inch poster board cardstock is what it is. Yeah. And you can take if you have a film strip you can take the film strip, put it in the projector, shine it up on the poster board, and pencil it in. Trace it over. And color it in. Mm -hmm. You can do the same for an overhead, mm -hmm. for slides, okay? And you don't need to be an artist. You trace it. You you're tracing trace it. the image on the poster mm -hmm. board is all you're doing. And then what you do is you take that and you show it to the kids. Now, if you're going to do that on a one-time deal, then fine. Um, you just trace it on there, take it out. What we do with ours is we take... Um, clear contact paper that you can buy in any hardware mm -hmm. store. After we get them all um, drawn up and colored in, then we take the contact paper and cover the front mm -hmm. and the back. Okay, we cover very carefully, and that way they're covered in plastic, mm -hmm. and if it rains on them, um, it doesn't hurt them, they can be wiped off. It's like a laminating used. process, except it's with contact paper. Right. Same principle. Same principle. And, and with that, between the object lessons and the poster board stories, you're able to convey to the kids what you're trying to say without just standing up there teaching. But it's important to have all that stuff ready ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, now Chris, you mentioned earlier in the program that you use some gospel mm -hmm. magic. Right. Now I know a lot of you watching may have a problem with that. And I want to explain something before we go any further. We do not use anything that is an end unto itself. In other words, what I'm saying, if we opt to use gospel magic or a poster story or some kind of an object lesson, it is nothing but an enhancer. It is used to develop the program so that by the time we get to the end of that lesson, we have brought those kids to a point of decision. Now, I know that there is not a whole lot of gospel magic shops per se. Many times I'll just go to a regular magic shop, look around, have the owner of the shop show me what the, the magic actually does, what, what, what it's supposed to do. Uh, for instance, this is one piece of gospel magic that I was able to find and there's there's more and more all the time and I want to show you this only so you can see the validity of using this. It's called a good news coloring book. And if you'll notice as I flip the pages they're all blank pages. I use this as an illustration of a life without Christ. It's blank. It's meaningless. Then as we flip the pages again we'll see that there is now a line sketch. We say when somebody accepts Christ as their personal savior, when they make a decision that the Lord begins to start taking things and there's a change. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. And as that life begins to grow, as things change and as their life progress in the Lord, then we see that in the end, guess what? There is a creation that God is pleased with. So I think you can see just a very simple thing like this, it turns into a wonderful way of communicating the gospel. So I hope you can see that there's some validity mm -hmm. to some of this kind of stuff. Now, we've talked about poster stories, we've talked about object lessons, uh, trying to convey the memory verse uh, through poster or some other ways. Right. Uh, what do you think, Chris? I think the key is to have everything ready the day before. Everything is won or lost. Yeah, that's, that's a good point right the there. The day we need before. To you can't expect to the day that you plan on doing the program to run out and pick up stuff, run out and, and prepare stuff. It has to be done well in advance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's um, taking the memory verse, like you were saying, mm -hmm. and writing it on a, um, you know, on a poster board. Right. Or a flip chart. Or a flip chart. A lot chart. of different ways you can different do that. Different ways you can do the memory verse. And, and so that, that's a lot of work. It's a sure lot is. of work involved it takes time. in putting a lesson together. I don't think it's good for a leader to expect to do it himself. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be a time when he can get everybody together or maybe delegate it out to different people where he has his helpers doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can be on the platform, but everybody can play a role. Mm -hmm. Everybody can yeah, play a part. That's a good point. And, and I think it's up to the leader to determine what part everyone's going to play. Um, there are people who may not do so well on the platform, but they have artistic ability or they can write very neatly. Um, there may not be people who can do a whole lot of anything, but they can color a picture in, mm -hmm. or they can go out to the store 
and pick up some, some object lesson. So it's important to delegate it out, but delegate it out in enough time that by the time the day comes that you're going to do your program, it's all ready to go, mm -hmm. it's all set, um, you have checklists. Right. Well, it goes back to the weekly meeting. Right. Basically, at the start of this point, we've talked about having the weekly planning meeting. Delegate all the things out at that time. Tell folks when is expected. You know, one of the main rules of delegation is you don't just delegate for delegation's sake. Set a time frame, tell them when it's expected back, and then do the follow-up to delegation. Make a checklist so that when you leave the church with your sidewalk vehicle, whatever it may be, look at that list and know that everything that you need to put on that lesson for that day is in the truck, in its prepared form, ready to go. There's nothing worse than getting out to your sidewalk Sunday school site, opening the truck, have everything ready to go, and find out that you've left even one thing mm -hmm. that was necessary back at the church. By then, it's too late. So just this one point of preparation is going to be so important before you ever leave the building so when you get there, you're ready, and it will go as smooth as possible. Do you think it's pretty? Yes. Okay, well, you know want to know what? I want you to stand right over here, please. I want you to turn and look right over here. This cup is so pretty. I just destroyed it. Now, if you do that to something as precious as a child like this, if you destroy something that is very, very precious, if you take someone's life, that is called murder. And that person could never, never come back to life again on this earth. Do you understand that, girls? Taking another person's life is murder. This is our last point in this seminar, and it's the format of the actual Sunday school lesson itself. It's to that point, I guess, Chris, right now. We've done everything we can do to be prepared. We've talked about the truck. We've talked about workers. We've talked about the leadership. We've talked about advertisement, promotion. This is it. You're out there on the street, okay? Everything is ready. The kids are there. Now what actually happens? First of all, start on time. If you've got a time set, start on time. It's very important that folks understand when there's an expected time of beginning that that's what you do all right you're excited you've got the microphone right here it's probably one of the most important tools that you're going to have to have that's why i've kept it on me during this whole session this is your crowd control machine right here we come right out of the gate first thing we do when we start we say okay kids we got two rules rule number one once we start and we've started once you start, that's their signal. And they'll know that. It's a process of education. It's not going to be that way at first. But it's going to take some time. And they'll know. Once we start, you don't get out of your seat. You don't run off. You don't walk around. Get them seated. You start. The rule number two, when I blow the whistle, that means quiet. Whether it's during the game time, whether it's during fun time, no matter what it is that we're doing, whenever you blow that whistle, You've got to ingrain in these kids' minds that that is the time when they sit down and it is totally quiet. So start right out. First day, get them ingrained in knowing what the whistle actually means. Go over the rules, then we go right to prayer. How do we do that? What do we do? Um, I think it's important to remember that when you have somebody up there, maybe somebody's been a Christian for a long time, mm -hmm. okay, they get up there, they get the mic in their hand, and all of a sudden, all the old cliches, all the old words they've always right. used all their life yes. come up. And, you know, believe it or not, not everybody knows what washed in the blood means. That's not right. everybody knows what sanctified means. That's right. But for me, I always try to keep my prayers real simple. And I always tell other people when they're praying, just say, it's important to let the kids know that talking to God isn't something that's out of their reach. That's right. That they can talk to God. you got to relate. you got to relate. And they have to know that, that they can do that. You know, just say, God, thank you for this day. Um, help us to have a good time, but more importantly than that, God, help us to learn and remember the lesson. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's how you start off in prayer. You know, it, I don't think it needs to be a great, 
time of, of um, a lot of spiritual words mm -hmm. and a lot of spiritual jargon. It just needs to be a time where I think more than anything else, letting the kids know that they can talk to God and it's an easy thing to do. Yeah, and this may seem a bit elementary to some of you, okay? But believe it or not, folks, there are a lot of people that have no concept of what we're talking about right now, all right? That's why we're going over this. We do not waste words. We're not, we're not trying at this point to speak down to any of you. Maybe there's some of you that have been teachers and you know what we're saying, but there may be some that don't. Mm -hmm. All right, next point. Very quickly move right into some songs. When we're in our church, we put all of our songs on the overhead. Obviously, if you're outside, can't do that. Poster board songs, flip chart songs, yeah. but get the words up there. Just like they don't know how to pray, they don't know the songs. All right? Got to get the words up there. It needs to be big enough, too, so that everybody can see it. Exactly. Exactly. Please. You're going to have a crowd of kids, 100, 200. They've got to see it. Nothing worse than trying to teach people something that they can't see. What about the music? Okay. What if you don't have a guitar player? I remember when I started, I had a girl the first time I was ever out on the street. I was 19 years old. I had a girl that said, I can play the accordion. She lied. She couldn't play it. <laughs> I got out there. I had no music. Uh, what do you do? You're in trouble. Uh, we made cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. We have gotten our church musicians to make a tape of some of the choruses. All right, you can play the tape through your sound system. It's not great, but it works. And it makes noise. And by making the noise, all of the kids that are in the kind of the perimeter hear it, get excited, want to come, yeah. be a part. All right, so we, we've told the rules. Uh, we've prayed, opened in prayer. We've talked about uh, songs. Now we go right into the games. Now, Chris, you make up a lot of the games, as a matter of fact. You've got a Sunday school game book mm -hmm. that you've put together, right. and uh, so that, that's important. Well, basically, what I do with games is just that um, it all has to tie together. I feel real strongly about everything in the whole part of the lessons, from the songs, to the, just like in an adult service. Mm -hmm. You know, any pastor will tell you that the way the praise and worship goes would be the way that the message goes. Exactly. It sets it all, the tone right. for the rest of the time. It all has to tie together, and that may seem a little bit far-fetched to relate that to games, but I don't think it is. Um, we have a game that has to do with the theme, whatever we're doing, mm -hmm. and it's fun games. The kids know that you can be a Christian and have fun. That's right. A Christian is not just somebody that goes to church all the time and then doesn't carry it out into their real life. It's being a Christian is, is something they can do every day of their life and have fun and live as a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, the way we choose the kids is we don't just arbitrarily pick them. We ask Bible questions from the week before. Okay. Why? why? This is something they, they need to know why we use just the kids that know the answers to the questions? Well, a number of reasons. First of all, it instills faithfulness in the kids. If the kids know that the only way they're going to be able to come up and play the games is if they were there the week before. Mm -hmm. And um, we're listening. And we're listening and we're paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, then that will keep them faithful. When it comes time for the lessons, you say, kids, um, next week you guys need to listen carefully because next week I'm going to ask questions from what I'm teaching mm -hmm. them. Okay? And so that helps them get quiet. Um, also, I found that it it makes it kind of like a school-like atmosphere. Yeah. If you can ask questions, um, put the que somehow have the questions maybe, don't do this every week, but maybe for a variation is have the questions written on a large piece of poster board. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like a school, and the kids are used to being in school. They're used to raising their hands if they know the answer. So let them do it. Mm -hmm. L enforce that. Um, reinforce what they learn in school and, and apply it to, um, to the church or to the sidewalk Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And so I think the games are an important time. It uh, builds excitement. Excitement is so important out on the street. Um, that's how you get the crowds. That's and the crowd the draws a crowd. That's right. The excitement draws more excitement. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that. You get kids going. You get the boys yelling for the boys and the girls yelling for the girls. Everybody's having a good time. Mm -hmm. The most fun I have is when I'm doing what I do. I sometimes think it's wrong <laughs> that, you know, it's my job because it seems like so much fun. But, um, but it needs to be that way. Right. It is fun being a Christian. Sure it is. Now, Chris, we're, we're talking a little bit of the philosophy of games, but I know some of the folks may be wondering, mm -hmm. sounds good, okay, but what kind of games do we play? Do we play Monopoly with the kids? <laughs> or, uh, you know, what kind of games can you make that are exciting, that are like boys against the girls, mm -hmm. com competition games, but yet are healthy? You know, there's a big thing now that well, competition is unhealthy. What kind of things do we do? Tell me. Okay, well, we always divide it between the boys and the girls. Right. We have the boys